All right. Well, I'm very happy with the condition of that now. That's great. So we'll pop that to one side. Since that paper is not very clean, we'll pop that to one side with it. Turn my attention to the shutter blades and the mechanism plate over here. So I'll start with the shutter blades. There are marks on these blades. Um, looks like oil to me. It'll be from where the blades were overlapped and there's been a little bit of oil in between them. The oils typically settle there from elsewhere in the uh, camera or shutter. And they're certainly not put on the blades during assembly. In fact, oil is not usually required in shutters. So I'm just cleaning these carefully with a bit of uh, cigarette lighter fluid on a cotton bud. And I'm looking to see if all the marks clean away and that the blades look clean and shiny and uniform. Because the blades are quite shiny, I'm very much reliant on reflections from the window. Uh, as the light plays across the blades, as I move my head, I can tell whether there are any residual marks on those blades. And also, as I clean the blades with this cotton bud or Q-tip, I'm also aware of any roughness that I might feel. If I felt some roughness there, then I would be looking closer. There may be a um, corrosion spot or some damage, or some other foreign matter might have been come stuck to the blade. Um, but these are all smooth, and basically they look like new blades. So I'll pop those up there out of the way. If the blades are not perfect, typically I would polish them with some metal polish, and most likely I would be using Brasso because Brasso has proved to be very useful in the past. If you use Brasso on the blades you can polish those shutter blades quite effectively. Um, you have to be careful to clean all traces of the polish off afterwards with some cigarette lighter fluid and cotton buds to make sure that there's, there's nothing left. Oh yes that's, see that dark staining there, that's come off this plate. So those that marks on the surface I said looked like condensation, they were not. They're oil or grease. Um, And that would account for the stickiness of that shutter. That plate in particular was very reluctant to move freely. And if you have grease over a wide flat surface area like that, yes, it would, uh, it just sticks stuff. It just, it, the shear forces required to move it are just too high, it, given the weak springs that are intended to do the moving and so it won't, they don't go. Well that explains why the shutter was so reluctant to move even though the blades themselves um, were, though not entirely clean were not in a bad state. And here you can see, if I get, get it in the light correctly, yeah, you can just see a big fingerprint here. 
where someone's just grabbed it. I'm running the cotton bud over that, see if there's any roughness to it, see if that, that corrosion is um, more than just a, a stain. It really isn't much more than a stain, doesn't require any extra work. And likewise on the back here, there's some little bit of staining around there. And again, rubbing it with a cotton bud, I can feel whether there is any likely to be any issue from that. Then it feels good to me, it feels fine. So our mechanism plate, well it's got the matching marks of course from that other plate. So I expect that that will require just as much cleaning. So I'll remove the two screws, the two, two remaining screws from the lens tube, lift the lens tube off, lift off the blade actuating ring and start cleaning this mechanism plate. Now the mechanism plate is uh, anodized aluminium. It's, they're pretty robust and they're not prone to corrosion at all. Anodizing of course makes the surface of the aluminium very hard and it's not prone to wearing either to any great extent. But a lot of stuff came off there on the cotton bud, not as much as came off its mating plate, but certainly enough to show us that it was dirty. And I'll clean the top surface, or the front surface. This surface of course is where all the control mechanism for the shutter is located. When you're cleaning components like this where there are a lot of little levers and posts and springs and things sticking out, you have to look quite closely when you've finished to make sure that you remove any threads of cotton from the uh, cotton bud that might have become lodged behind, around or under the components. Otherwise you end up with situations where a camera might go home after service, function nicely for six months and then suddenly develop some mystery illness. And when you take it apart to find out what the story is, you'll find some tiny little tuft of cotton. It become lodged in some inconvenient spot. So you can tell by that that I speak from experience. The blade actuating ring is steel, it's quite high tensile steel, a spring steel of some sort. I'm just checking that to make sure it's nice and clean, it all looks good. Now I can start reassembling this mechanism plate and picking out a couple of bits of cotton as I do so. so I'll just drop the actuating ring down into position and checking that nothing's trapped under it and I'll swing that detent spring into position The detent is important because it helps locate the, stops the shutter blades from drifting open. It means that you can shake the camera as much as you like but the shutter blades, blades stay firmly closed until the mechanism tells them to open. 
And if you didn't have that, you'd shake the camera, the blades would just flop about. So the detent is there to hold things in position when you're not doing anything exciting. So it has to be strong enough to do its job, to keep things at the start position until you tell it to go. And it has to be sufficiently light in its duty that when things are told to go and when they do start to move that it's not causing an obstruction and it's not slowing down the process. And that's achieved by the shape of that spring and by a little bit of lubricant in which in this case we'll be using um, molybdenum but equally you could use graphite grease. Just checking that's all in position, that nothing's trapped underneath it. Then I can tighten down those two screws. If had this been a Retina 3C for example, I would have had the third screw in place because the bracket that holds the spring um, wouldn't need to be off. I'm just checking the action here. It's certainly smooth. Um, probably slightly more friction from that detent than I would like. I'm going to do two things to lubricate this plate. The first thing I'm going to do is lubricate this retain this um, blade actuating ring with a bit of graphite powder and work it in and blow out any excess just as I did with the diaphragm. And once I've got that done, this detent here, I will put a little touch of molybdenum paste on there and that will make sure that this pin that runs past that spring runs as freely as it should be. Because one of the things that we have to be aware of is that this is our main drive spring and it's only the power of that little spring that swings the cam which swings that blade actuating ring backwards and forwards. So there's a limited amount of power available to make all the actions happen and so things need to be clean and smooth and free running otherwise things won't happen. Right, so I'll get on to putting some graphite powder into that and working it and then I'll come back and carry on with the rest. Okay, graphite powder successfully deployed. Now, a touch of molybdenum on that detent spring where it contacts that pin. That's good, that feels feels better. There are two more points I want to deal with where the cam, the main drive cam contacts that blade actuating ring to swing it in first in one direction and then swing it back the other way. That looks good. I'm happy with that. Check that the plate is set in the blade closed position. Our plate goes on. It has a pin on the back which locates it. Only fits in one spot. That's it. I'm just checking that looks right. Something's not quite right. That's better. That's the blades open. Where are we? Blades closed.
Blades open. That one. Okay, so I've got that set correctly. And I'm going to place my shutter blades. With this shutter there are two two positions, two mechanisms for opening the blades. One is the traditional one from the blade actuating ring. And the second one is using this method for the preview and that's done by moving the fixed pivot point. Normally you're moving the moving pivot point. In this shutter we can move the pivot points at both ends. So I've got to make sure I get this correct. That's blade number one. Blade number two. Has a cut out in it. Just checking I've got it in the right place. I think so. Of course if I haven't got it in the right place I'll just be doing this piece of video twice. You'll never see the mistake. Okay, and the outer shutter case, or the inner shutter case rather, that can go back in position over this. So I need to get it into the correct position. And I'm checking all of the places that I could probably put this thing. And it's looking like it. Why am I not seeing what I'm expecting to see? Does it go there? Oh, okay, yes, I've just got something confusing me there. Right. It goes on right there. I'm checking my alignment for my three screw holes. That's all correct. The three black countersunk or flathead screws can go into place. I'll put them in place but I'm not screwing them up tight because if you screw those screws up tight and you had happened to have a blade had slipped out of place or bounced out of place while you were putting the case in place you can end up damaging a blade right so the shutter blades are closed that's in the normal closed position and our viewing our moving fixed pivot plate allows for viewing through the range through the viewfinder when the shutter is cocked and that is all moving freely and exactly as I would expect so I can tighten our three screws up I'm confident now that the stiffness or the stickiness I felt earlier was down to grease oh no I'm not confident at all that suddenly went tight That's interesting. Okay. All right, very interesting. All right, as soon as I tightened up this third screw, the shutter went from working perfectly to working badly. Uh, now, there's usually the reason for that is normally that it comes down to the same thing. And normally what has happened is it means that the camera has been dropped on its nose and that the shutter has compressed and as a result there is no longer the correct clearance inside the shutter to allow the blades to move freely. And I would imagine that that would certainly explain the symptoms in this particular shutter because I know I've got it clean 
and before I lock those three screws down tight, with two of them down tight, absolutely perfect. If I tighten the third screw, you can, you can feel some tension against that screw as you tighten the third screw down, like there's some distortion going on. But when I tighten it down, immediately the shutter stiffens up. That suggests to me that this case is distorted, as I say, that's most likely the answer. Could be the mechanism plate, but uh, in my experience it's more likely to be the case, because the aluminium case um, is, is quite fine on its cross section and is typically where you'd find the damage. So what I will be doing is hunting through my parts for another shutter case and rebuilding the shutter into that and seeing if the problem goes away. And if it does go away, I'll know that I was right. If with a new shutter case I still have the problem, then I would turn my attention to the mechanism plate and suspect that the mechanism plate has been distorted or damaged. But it's obviously going to be a tedious job. I've got to go and find some parts. All right, I've found a suitable victim. This shot is a bit tatty looking. Um, obviously came out of some camera that was wrecked for parts. Um, so I'll strip this, take out the shutter case, clean it, assemble that upper diaphragm into it, and uh, start again, see if that'll do the job. Of course, I can use my new tool now to help me get this apart. Uh, would have been handy if I'd had that another another time. Back shortly. Right, well I'm back to the stage now. I've got another shutter case with clean diaphragm blades all ready to use. Um, and I'm trying this now on our mechanism plate to see if we get a better result. The one I'd selected to be the victim, um, I couldn't actually do anything useful with it because of uh, because of a bit of bad luck really, I'll tell you about that later. Let's see if we can get this case on here. What I'm interested in is whether this shutter case is makes any difference to that unusual stiff action of the shutter blades. If it does, we can comfortably say that the shutter case was the problem, that it was distorted. If it makes no difference, then something else is the cause, and I would suspect the mechanism plate instead. Anyway, I've got those down, and what do I discover? The shutter blades are still unnaturally stiff. So we can say now that it is almost certainly not distortion in the shutter case, that our problem lies elsewhere. That's our shutter case that we started with originally. And this was the shutter case I'd taken from a donor and the mechanism plate acted in exactly the same fashion. So, now I will clean the mechanism plate from my donor and see how that works with either of those shutter cases. And before I go much further, I think I'll mark my parts so I know which ones are the original and which one was the donor. And so I'll clean this mechanism plate and uh, we'll work with that or attempt to. We need a free running shutter. This one is in very much the same state as its mate was prior to us servicing it. Almost identical pattern of uh, muck on the plate. 
let's see how this goes. This is not the sort of thing you usually discover when you're working on one of these cameras. Normally the shutter simply needs to be serviced. That the shutter is simply sticky with oil on the blades and uh, needs to be stripped and cleaned. Appropriate lubrication at the appropriate points but otherwise nothing major to report. The first shutter I'd chosen to be my um, donor, I couldn't get the retaining ring off the back. I'd mentioned that retaining rings were a problem with this model in particular. Well as it happened, the retaining ring on the one I'd chosen to use had already provided a fight to someone previously. The original spanner grooves in it, the slots where you engage your spanner, were chewed right out. One of them was completely torn out. It had had new slots cut into the ring at um, 90 degrees from the existing slots, but it wouldn't come apart. There wasn't any chance of me getting it unscrewed. The threads were looking a bit chewed from the abuse they'd suffered, I would say, from previous attempts getting the ring off. And even using more, all the tools at my disposal, there was no danger that I could get that thing to shift. Eventually I turned it about a quarter of a turn, but by that stage I damaged the shutter case. So it was a, uh, a lost cause really at that stage. What I did do was I did manage to get it apart, and I did that by splitting the retainer ring into four pieces by drilling through each of the slots tool engagement slots on the drill press, I was able to drill, cut right through the retainer ring to bring it, reduce it to four pieces. Of course the four pieces wouldn't just fall off, because unlike most retainer rings where the retainer ring is simply pulling something back against a flat surface, these retainer rings seat inside a groove. And because they're seated inside a groove, there was nowhere for the pieces to fall away from the thread, even once they'd been cut loose. So I had to force them, shuffle them around the threads repeatedly, one after another, until such stage as I had, they started to, they'd lifted out of their retainer groove and uh, I was able to move them. But I have to say that is um, unusual. But it does explain why that shutter was in my spare parts bins. A lot of the spare parts I have are parts that I've been given at some stage in the past. And often, particularly when they come as a box of stray parts, they're other people's failed repairs. So sometimes they have uh, serious issues. Never mind. Nothing lost but a bit of time and uh, one milling cutter. This shutter in my spares box by comparison was already out and free. It, uh, quite possibly this one had served as a donor when I was looking to poach a retainer ring to repair something else. This shutter looked to be in quite good order actually. It clearly needs a service but it doesn't uh, 
doesn't look molested and certainly doesn't have any serious problems I hope so what I'm doing is I'm cleaning this mechanism plate and this whole mechanism plate assembly we will try in both of the shutter cases and see if it gives us any problems and uh, it be better not because I'm here placing all my bets on the, the mechanism plate being the cause of our problems here otherwise I'm going to have to think extremely seriously about other possible causes Alright, that's good. Now the lens tube, I want to clean that. I'll have to have a close look here to make sure that the lens tubes match. The lens tube on cameras fitted with a Rodenstock Halogon lens differs subtly to the lens tube on a shutter for a camera fitted with a Schneider lens and of course we want they need to match can't be doing any mix and matches So I serviced another shutter of this type just the other day and that job went absolutely smoothly, no problems at all. So I really wasn't watching for any problems arising on this one. Peripheral. The retina reflex, the 025, the original retina reflex like this, uh, not the most popular model of camera in the world, and they serve as a very valuable source, part source, if you're looking for a replacement lens for a retina 3C. And so they're often scrapped for exactly that purpose. <coughs> 